Data breaches are one of the most visible, common, and almost certain threats facing nearly every person these days. Each week on Surveillance Report, we have an entire section dedicated to data breaches. Surveillance Report, for those who don't know, is a weekly current events privacy and security podcast that I co-host with Henry of TechLore. You should check it out, link in the description. But why are data breaches so common? Why do criminals go after this data? What harm can they do with it? And how do they even happen? In this video, I'm going to attempt to cover everything you need to know about data breaches. Before we go into any of this, let's rewind a little bit and talk about passwords and hashing. When you log into a website, you type in your password. Good websites who are doing everything right will not actually see your password. What they will do is on your device when you type that password in, they do something called hashing. A hash is a one-way encryption. They take your password, they run it through a special algorithm, and what comes out is a bunch of gibberish. When you make an account for the first time or change your password and you are asked to enter the password, they save that hash. Every time after that, when you log in, the password gets hashed on your device and then compared to the hash that they have on file. Now, unfortunately, not every website does this, but the vast majority do because it's not difficult and it's basic common practice. Typically, websites will only hash your password. Most of them don't really hash anything else. Some of them might hash your card numbers if they take that kind of data, but that's relatively rare. With that in mind, let's talk about data breaches. First, let's talk about how they happen. So first, an attacker picks their target. They will usually go after big targets, websites with lots of users. The type of data doesn't really matter as long as they have lots of registered users. It's a bonus if they can get into something that processes payments, but that's not necessarily a surefire thing as most e-commerce sites these days are getting in the habit of not saving full card numbers or bank account numbers. Now, why is it that these stories are so common? Are the attackers purposely picking people with bad security or people who are underfunded? Well, yes and no, because the fact is pretty much every company has bad security and is underfunded. First of all, it's important to note that a lot of companies don't give their cybersecurity department a good enough budget. And that's because from a numbers perspective, cybersecurity is worthless. When you're looking at it purely from the numbers and profits and losses, it's a department that you constantly spend money in that you don't see any obvious value from. It's not one of those things where like you pay marketing and all of a sudden your sales go up 10% or you hire a graphic designer to redesign the shop and now you're seeing more goods sold because checkout is easier. It's not one of those things. You just pour money into this company and if they do it right, everything just works and functions like normal and you never actually see the benefit because it's invisible. Therefore, a lot of people mistake that for saying, well, we're spending too much money here, everything's working, so let's cut their budget. Even if a company does have adequate security measures in place and does give their department good enough funding, there's always the human element. The employees at the company might use bad passwords or they might reuse passwords, and they're people too, which means they've also got accounts on other websites that probably suffer data breaches. We'll talk more about that in a second. There's also social engineering. You know, people can call in and just say, hey, Hey, this is Jim from IT and I need you to visit this link so I can troubleshoot your computer. That's a real thing. That happens a lot. It's also really important to remember the defender needs to get it right every single time. The attacker only needs to get it right once. When you're the company being targeted by a malicious actor, they can try over and over and over again and you've got to have your defense perfect every single time. One mistake and they could get in. So the odds are always in the attacker's favor. So regardless of what method they use, once the attacker has access, typically they steal everything they're able to. Email addresses, IP addresses, passwords, cool, we'll take it all, thanks. Good companies who invest in cybersecurity have tools to know when their security has failed and there's something fishy and out of the ordinary going on in the system. So when you're an attacker, it's important just to get in there and start grabbing as much as you can because you don't know if this company has those kind of tools. You don't know when they're gonna find you and shut off that access. 
So once the attacker has stolen this data, they've got most of it in plain text, email addresses, IP addresses, maybe bio information, if it's a website where you can put in a bio, purchase history, things like that. But they don't have the passwords, so they'll try to decrypt the hashes. Now there's two ways of doing this. There's dictionary attacks and there's brute force. A dictionary attack is when an attacker will take a word list, and this could be a word list they've made themselves or one they've got off the internet, and they'll try every word on that list. A brute force attack is when they just try every possible combination. Note that the attacker does not do this manually. They have software that does this, and this software is free and widely available. There's lots out there. In the case of a brute force attack, for example, they may tell the cracking software, guess every possible combination that's 10 characters long and has uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, and special characters. And the software will just go. And this software can make thousands of guesses per second. And that's not even a high-end computer. We're just talking a normal computer that you can get at Best Buy. This really doesn't take much to do this kind of thing. But it's not just the passwords that are valuable. Once the attackers have the passwords, usually they don't make use of it themselves. Usually they will go to other criminal forums and sell this information. Once other people have purchased this information, there's all kinds of things they can do with it. If there's a username and password combo, they could try to log into your account and wreak havoc. There's also a common attack called credential stuffing. The way credential stuffing works is the attacker will take the credentials that they've gotten and will try them on other websites. So for example, a lot of websites, your login is also your email address. So if they know you're using Gmail or Yahoo, they'll go to Gmail and try that login and see if you're reusing your passwords or they'll go to Facebook, or they'll go to Amazon, or they'll go to other commonly used websites. They don't necessarily need the password though. Maybe they just want the email addresses. Just email addresses can be valuable because they can use that for phishing attacks. Now, when you think phishing attacks, you might think like the Nigerian print scam, but phishing attacks are actually constantly evolving. At the time of this recording, there was a really successful one that just happened recently where they were sending out emails to people promising them a sneak peek of season two of Squid Game, which for the record has not officially been announced. There is no season two at this time. Don't think that just because they have your email address that they're just gonna send you an obvious scam. People fall for this stuff all the time. In the case of actual logins, they can do all kinds of things. If they log into your Amazon account, they can order things in your name. If they log into your Facebook, then they can post as you. And I'm sure we've all seen that. People posting things like, hey, sweet deal on Ray-Bans. Again, this stuff is getting more sophisticated. Every piece of information you give a website is valuable to an attacker because they can use it in some way, shape, or form. Every piece really is valuable to them. And if you don't believe me, just look at the prices of some of this information. Fortunately, there are a lot of defenses against data breaches. There's using strong, unique passwords. There's using forwarding email addresses. There's using fake physical addresses or PO boxes. There's using VPNs and not giving them your real information. Don't worry. This is all stuff that we're going to go over in coming videos, subject by subject. But hopefully now you understand the basics of how this stuff works and why this information is so valuable and worth getting. And if you're still not convinced that it's valuable, just again, remember every week we have fresh data breaches to talk about, usually at least four or five. If it wasn't valuable, why would they keep doing it? For more detailed information on how data breaches work and information about all the tools I just listed off, check out thenewoil.org.